Hello again everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com and we've got a really special project to share with you. It's been in the works for a while, uh, something a little bit of a departure from our normal uh, builds. This is a German midget submarine. I'm super excited to share it with you. So, as I mentioned, this is a model in one ninth scale of a German midget submarine called the Seehund. This particular kit was put out by OTW out of the UK's 54 inches in overall length. It's a considerable sized boat. It has a ton of presence on the bench, on the water, and underneath it. This particular build is really exciting for me because it's something we managed to play with for the first time, uh, and that is a large scale remote controlled series of twin torpedoes for this boat. Before we get into that, let's get a little bit closer look at the hull, um, what it looks like, some of the features, and how it was put together. So the, the hull was originally uh, assembled by Ken Griffin in Florida. I sold it uh, a couple of years ago to a gentleman and then he returned it back to me in trade for yet a different boat. So this is actually the, uh, the second time this boat has been through my shop. Um, this particular iteration of it has seen a lot of upgrades, which we'll go into in a minute. Let's talk about the hull itself. Fiberglass uh, construction. The entire thing is fiberglass with resin uh, appendages. You can see up on the sail here, we've got a large aluminum tube, and that's because this boat is running off of 2.4 gigahertz, and we want to keep that antenna up above the level of the water. Big boats like this love those 2.4 gigahertz radio systems. You get absolutely flawless reception, a high degree of reliability, a ton of channels, uh, and built-in fail-safe functionality. So there's a lot of good things going for it in this specific application. If we take a look at the back here, uh, a couple of things to note. This is like a, a shrouded propeller, uh, and this is basically the, the rudder. It's like a court nozzle. You'll see these on tugboats a lot. Gives you a lot of really exceptional maneuverability uh, in this boat. You got the uh, the dive planes here. Now the stock ones, as you can imagine, are, are these gray things uh, here. As the boat works uh, in the water, as it as it progresses through the water, it requires flow over these in order to control the pitch. So the propeller is not washing fluid over these dive planes. What we did just to make this so much more fun uh, and responsive to drive, we added these clear rudder extensions. So these uh, slip into slots that we machined into these dive planes and then they're secured in place with a stainless steel set screw. Now, if the owner uh, decides he doesn't want them or he wants to put the boat on display for a while, simply undo the set screw, pull the plastic out and you've got something that uh, is very much more stock as the boat would have been operating in the World War II theater. Let's take a look at the radio since we're uh, we're right here. It's a radio link uh, radio. It still actually handle up to 12 channels, uh, but we're only using four because uh, Seund has no forward dive planes and uh, and no other additional features. Remote switch uh, is on the back. This this key fob here is for, and these other two, which are the exact same heavy duty switch units, uh, control the launching of the torpedoes. So again. We're going to get to that in a moment. Taking a look at the front here, this little front display, we've got a big heavy duty nickel metal hydride 10 amp hour battery pack uh, operating at 12 volts. Now, if you did not watch my video on the creation of this battery pack, uh, what's wrong with you? Um, but that video is up and I will put a link to that in the description of this video. So this is what powers the, uh, the entire model. This is an OTW 3.5 inch diameter watertight cylinder. Um, single shaft, obviously. This has the, the big motor option in it. A six inch tank. Now, what is not typical 
uh, for these OTW modules is what you see right here. In typical format, OTW uses these high pressure pumps to pump water into a sealed ballast tank. And that water level rises until the pump is no longer able to overcome the pressure that's inside the tank. With those ballast tanks, you can never fully utilize the entire volume of that ballast tank because there's always gonna be an air pocket in the top there that's compressed uh, as you fill the tank. What we elected to do for this, because this is a 2.4 uh, uh, gigahertz boat and it is always going to be basically next to the surface of the water, we decided to make it a low pressure pump system. So that air pressure gets vented through this nozzle uh, on the top through a rubber hose and it connects to an intake that uh, you can see right here in the top of this little mast at the top of the boat. So this is where it draws air in as you're blowing the ballast tank and where the air exits from when you're venting the ballast tank. The advantage to that, it uh, goes through those cycles much faster and it's much more energy efficient, uh, uses a lot less current. So I did it that way because for this particular setup, this particular boat, it makes a ton of sense. All right, to the good stuff. Twin torpedoes, these things are like two and a half inches in diameter, really, really sizable units. Now, as they come from OTW, these, these torpedoes are two halves, the entire length of the weapon, and you glue them together, more for static display than anything else. I elected to cut the nose and tail off, so these are the stock fiberglass parts, and replace the center section with some PVC pipe that we just simply got from uh, Home Depot. Uh, the diameter is within a 32nd of an inch, so that worked really, really well. We printed some bulkheads in here, and now the center section of the boat is turned into a watertight compartment. It houses uh, the batteries, the remote on-off switch, and the main drive motor. Again, if you follow my channel, you'll see exactly how Jason and I put these together earlier on, I'll link to that in the description as well. Basically, these are uh, our dumb weapons. You hit that switch, uh, they launch off of the uh, boat, go as straight as they can go, and then you can turn them off whenever you want to cut the power. I'm gonna show you uh, in a little bit, these weapons in operation, both in my swimming pool and at the lake, which was just where we were at today, doing the shakedown cruise of this boat. So, now that we've talked about all of the uh, main parts, bits and components of the boat, let's take a closer look at the internals, get that cylinder set up, drop it inside, uh, and see how everything goes together. All right, installation of the watertight cylinder. Access to the hull, twin, Stainless steel bolts on the top. You can uh, undo these with your fingers. No special tools required. Goes down here, lift up on the straight up and back. Now there's that intake hose that connects to the top of the watertight cylinder. And that leads up to that mast opening in the top there. Looking inside, we've got uh, a big empty keel. We've got some Velcro for holding down our watertight cylinder. And then in the back here, we've got our main drive shaft and the linkages for our rudder and for our dive planes. And we got magnetic connectors that go on there. First step we need to do, um, obviously charge your battery up. Um, that would be a super smart first step. If you take a look on the bottom, we got a little Velcro tab, and in the bottom of the boat is another Velcro tab. This helps you align the battery to the uh, proper orientation in the keel. And now we have ballast weight in the keel of the boat. So because we had so much room, we have an external battery in the keel that's providing that ballast weight for stability for the boat. There's our waterproof connector right there. Grab our cylinder, make sure we're not gonna trap anything here. Split our Velcro, and we drop this down, and these little um, knurled nuts right here nestle into holes in this bulkhead. Linkages are connected 
are solid, locked in, the drive shaft is connected. Um, can take our antenna here. Just gonna pull this out across the front. Now we've got this hose on the front of the watertight cylinder. This is a test hose to test the watertight integrity of the watertight cylinder. Now, if you have a standard OTW dive module, as you may have seen in some of my previous videos, you can actually test the watertight integrity simply by cycling the ballast system. The reason that works is because that ballast system is actually vented with a tiny hole in the top that flows into this ballast compartment. So as that water level increases, the ambient pressure inside the cylinder increases. And if there's a leak, you'll see the bubbles. We don't have that. Um, it's a lot, it's better because uh, we're not pressuring up these two compartments here, but uh, to test for leaks, you simply submerge the cylinder, uncap the hose, blow into it, and you can see if there are any leaks. Got our Velcro hold down. So now this is completely locked in. It can't go up, it can't rotate, it can't go back, and it can't go forth. Um, got our battery here, and I can go ahead and connect this because there's a remote switch in this particular cylinder, and connecting the battery doesn't turn anything on at this particular point. Now that that's done, let's grab our radio and check the functions of the boat. So we've got our radio on, powered up with the fob. You saw the servo move there. Uh, there we go, we'll center that off. Now let's test the functions. Um, we'll start with our rudder. We got our throw left and right. We've got our dive planes going on there. We got our throttle. And I will say, and Jason can attest to this, this thing moves in the water. It'll put up a pretty tremendous wake behind it. Um, you don't have to operate it that way, but it's got a lot of speed if and when you want to use it. Pretty awesome. Last thing, the last function of it is the ballast. I've got this on switch C, which is a, a, a latching three-way switch. Center is off. Uh, if you want to go down, you simply hit down. And then if you want to come back up, you simply hit up. Ah! That simple. Now, one of the, the neat things about this, when you connect all of this, which I'll start to do right now, I might as well. Um, when you are venting your ballast tank, uh, so there, there's the, the bottom of that hose or the mast right there. We just slip that 2.4 gigahertz antenna in there. It comes right out the top. So as that ballast tank vents all the way, you actually get a visual indication that the entire capacity of the ballast tank is utilized because that pump is trying to force water into it. Uh, and once it's filled, there is an exit and that is through the hose. So you'll get just a little spray of water out the top of this little mast here. And that's how you know your ballast tank is completely full. Your boat is in full submerged trim. Um, and obviously at that point you shut your pump off unless you want to have a spray of water going into the air, which is kind of a cool feature as well. So this is all done. Now we, we simply grab our bolts, lock them up, tighten it down, and we're done. Now what we need to do is prep our torpedoes. So for the most part, you're not really gonna end up having to take the stern of the torpedo off, but it just, it does come off if you want to. It's friction fit with a seal in there. Um, inside, well, you can't really see it because it's in there. There's the main drive motor uh, coupled to the drive shaft that runs to the back. Only the sternmost propeller spins. This is not a contra rotating uh, propeller setup. It doesn't need it. So for simplicity's sake, um, we're just gonna Keep it uh, single prop. Press this in, make sure it's nestled, line up the marks. That's all done. Now that that's done, we're gonna grab a battery. These are uh, 850 milliamp hour, 7.4 volts, so 2S lithium polymer batteries. I'm gonna hook them up. And inside, you can see a little Velcro 
pad that goes with the Velcro pad on the battery. Push that in, push it down, grab the front. And this is a great time. Jason actually reminded me that uh, to show you another modification we did. Now, when you get these torpedoes from OTW, they come with these white metal pieces. And uh, they're absolutely beautiful and they're, they're you know, historically accurate. This is what the front of those weapons looked like. You can imagine, actually this is super sharp, that this is, this would be quite painful if it were to slam into somebody's leg or ankle or child or dog or, hey, if you're in the pool, slamming into uh, a tile or something like that. Probably not the best situation. So we made the decision to forego these units and we cast up our own rubber tips. These are a soft rubber. This is actually mold making rubber, really soft uh, durometer hardness. So you could literally smash this into at full speed, the side of a swimming pool. It won't break a tile. Um, while it might make a little bruise in your leg, it's not going to stab you uh, and bleed you out or anything like that. So same thing. Um, we're just going to go ahead slip that into place, line up the marks. Now that that's all done, let's, uh, let's do a function check. We're gonna take our handy dandy weapon control panel here. Both of the weapons are marked. This one's got a little S on these tabs. So we're gonna go starboard, and uh, hopefully when I push this button, it fires up. And it does, and it works underwater from a distance. So that's how you control the on off functions of the weapon. So this one is all set to go. Um, let's show you loading it. I was actually really concerned about how we were gonna rig up the launching mechanism on this submarine, but I elected um, to go for the KISS principle. Super simple, basically it's a, uh, a sliding rack. Now these, uh, these rack pieces uh, we got from uh, Home Depot, it's a T-hanger slide. So these are the, the pieces that go underneath, they slide into this rack. Now, what I need to do is get this model down. So simply match up the slot, slide it back, there we go. This is hard to do, there we go. So as you saw, all that did, uh, it, just, it just slides in and there's a retaining bolt in the back here that stops it from moving any further aft. So right now, if you were to tip it forward, the torpedo would easily slide right off the rack onto the floor. In practical application, when you're running the boat, um, you've always got, or most of the time, you've got forward movement. It's forcing that torpedo back against the stop there. Even going from full forward to full reverse, there's not enough force on that torpedo to push it off of its rack. So this is as simple as it gets. In order to fire the weapon, you turn it on and it swims off the rack. It's that easy. And we're gonna show you in the pool how that works. All right, so the big question is, how does it actually perform in the water? And I am exceptionally happy to say, far beyond my hopes and dreams for this particular boat. The setup uh, inside seems to work just about perfectly. That three and a half inch cylinder provides exactly the right amount of buoyancy to bring it from fully uh, surfaced to fully submerged trim. The motor has ample torque, lots of power, and sufficient speed to make it a lot of fun to drive. It'll spin that propeller at, you know, 50 RPM all day, or right up at flank speed. You'll see in this video, this boat will put up a pretty tremendous wake as it pushes itself through the water, both surfaced or submerged. That court nozzle offers exceptional maneuverability. Uh, in the yaw axis. 
So your turns are nice and sharp. Uh, means you can operate in smaller bodies of water a lot more comfortably if you want to. The extensions on the dive planes made a huge difference as well. So you get a lot more impact at lower speeds uh, and it gives you really good positive pitch control of the boat. Uh, in terms of, of quirks, really it doesn't have a lot. As you'll see in the video, um, at periscope depth, at about half throttle, it is completely hands off. Um, you just simply use rudder inputs and it'll stay at periscope depth for as long as you want to keep it there. Now, there is one thing that I want to mention, and this was, uh, you know, um, a consideration that we needed to weigh carefully. We don't want, obviously, the torpedoes to be um, neutrally buoyant or negatively buoyant because then when you fire them, they're going to uh, sink or, or at least to the point where you can't recover them. So there needs to be at least a small degree of positive buoyancy. We elected to put that in the bow of the torpedoes. Reason being, we want it to always force the nose up so that that uh, motor in the back of it drives it in an upward uh, direction keeping it surfaced at all times, highly visible, uh, and for the most part, once it breaches the surface, very, very flat and level. With that being the case, a fully loaded boat is gonna be slightly positively buoyant by the nose. Now, I didn't play around very much. I didn't have a, as much of an opportunity as I would have liked to. To have operated this boat, um, trying to dive it with the torpedoes on there. I'm sure that it could be done, but I think it'll probably affect, you know, its stability underneath the water. So uh, it's just, uh, you know, a, a sacrifice made uh, for underwater performance when fully loaded versus having two fully functional, uh, really cool firing torpedoes on the boat. Now, if we want to talk about possibilities, the new owner could, if you wanted to, create a dynamic trim system in here. And ideally, the way that would work, you'd have a weight in the front that would offset the buoyancy of these two torpedoes. When you fire once, it would slide back halfway to offset half of that buoyancy fire the second time and it would slide back the rest of the way. And that way your overall uh, pitch trim would not be affected. It would have to be a dynamic system that would move upon firing the weapons uh, or a manual one that you could manually adjust the trim. Certainly not a massive undertaking, but it's beyond the scope of this particular project. One of those things to make it even cooler down the road. Well, there you have it, everyone. One ninth scale German Seehund midget submarine with fully operational remote controlled torpedoes. This has been a really fun project. It has exceeded my expectations in terms of performance. I'm a little bit jealous of the new owner. Um, if he wouldn't have already paid for it, I might have hung on to it for myself. But with that, we're going to let you go. Uh, if you like what you see here, do like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. If you have comments uh, or suggestions, by all means, reach out to me anytime. Bob at NautilusDryDocks.com. I would love to hear from you. With that, we will let you go. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.